This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this video series on thermal unit operations. We are still in the section on general considerations, especially the step constructions. In the last videos I have shown you how feeds can be considered and how side stream withdrawals can be regarded. Today I would like to look at a special case with, which is especially of interest for solvent extraction for, because in one case, namely where you have two solvents and the feed being fed into the column at the center of the process, there you exactly need this case where just the transfer component is being added to your column. How can we deal with that? Well, how does the situation look like? If we look at the general sketch again, we see that we of course have a countercurrent process with the G dot and the L dot and we are adding just the transfer component. Adding just the transfer component means that the carrier flow rates L dot and G dot don't change across this feed position. So this tells us actually that regarding the flow rates and the compositions as carrier flow rates and correspondingly the loads is possibly the easiest way to depict this case. So we have the flow rates that don't change, the L dot above and below are identical, the G dot as well, but the compositions of course change from X above to X prime below, Y and Y prime below. In order to um, now figure out how the situation looks like, we can uh, try to set up balances. And for these balances, I've shown two control volumes. Let's assume that they actually are somewhere below and somewhere above, can be directly above and below, for example, as an easy case, so to speak. And we see that in between we have the F dot. So now the question actually is, if I intersect below and if I in intersect above, what's the difference in the operating lines? Apparently, the slope has to be identical, because as we just said, the L dot doesn't change and the D G dot doesn't change. So also the ratio L dot over G dot, which is the slope of the operating lines, doesn't change. So there are possibly different operating lines, but they have the same slope. So they run parallel with the slope L dot over G dot. We know that directly. Now the question is, of course, by how much are they shifted? For that, exactly, we use these uh, control volumes that I just mentioned. Where on the one hand side, for the dash control volume, we have the um, G dot and L dot and the primed compositions. And the F dot does not enter. So the F dot does not enter into the dashed a control volume, but it enters into the dotted control volume where we have on the other hand side the unprimed uh, compositions. And now if we set up the balances for these two cases, the lower end so to speak is the same for both control volumes and then we can compare them and see the shift in the operating line. So if we set up the corresponding balances, how does that look like? Of course we assume, as we have stated already in the introduction to this, uh, to these set step constructions, uh, there we have um, steady state. So we know we have zero equals. What is entering? Now let's first look for the dashed control volume. Dash control volume, no feed entering and primed compositions at the top. What is entering? Well, on the one hand side we have entering from the top the L dot with the primed composition. So it's an L dot x prime. From below we have entering the g dot with the corresponding y and the y is of course that at the inlet the yi. What's leaving now? Leaving is again the same l dot but now of course again towards the bottom the xo and we have leaving towards uh, the top the g dot with the primed y composition. For the dotted control volume, we can set up the identical balance, zero equals. Well, entering from at the top is L dot, but now with the unprimed composition X, so times X, plus 
g dot yi, that's the same, that's entering from the bottom. But now we also have to consider that the f dot is actually being fed into the column. What is leaving? Minus, it's the l dot xo, that's the same, towards the bottom. And leaving towards the top is g dot times y, which is again the unprimed variable because we are regarding the dotted control volume. Now what we want to do, we want to solve for the operating line, that is y equals function of x. So what we need to do for both of these equations, we need to divide by the g dot, as we have done already previously, and then rearrange that so that we solve for this y prime or the y without the prime. So if we do it for the first equation, we obtain, we can directly write that, hopefully, we get y prime equals, he said we divide by the g dot, and this is transferred to the other side of the equal sign, so it's l dot over g dot times x prime. It's l dot over g dot, which is again the slope, times x prime, plus the yi, um, minus l dot over g dot xo, more or less x expected, the l dot and g dot are constant values, uh, the xo and the yi are given as well, so that's the constant value, we again have the equation for the straight line. We can of course do the same uh, solution or solve it the same way for the second uh, uh, balance and if we do that we obtain y equals, it's now the unprimed variable. We again get the first thing, L, uh, first term l dot over g dot, but now with the unprimed x plus the yi, and then the next term differs, so to speak, from the equation above, that's the f dot, and we divided everything by g dot, so it's the f dot over g dot, and the last term is actually again the same, it's the l dot over g dot xo. And now if we compare these two equations, we see the difference in the operating lines for the dashed, which is below the feet, and the dotted, which is above the feet, and we see that the above, above the feet we have an additional term which is added, positively added, f dot over g dot. And of course we need to know the f dot and we usually also need to know the g dot, either it is given or it results from an economic optimization of the overall process. So this is known in at this point of, um, of design or it is assumed if you are in the process of the economic optimization you vary the g dot possibly, but for each individual diagram you can assume the corresponding value for which you want to determine the cost for your product. So we shift in y direction by f dot over g dot. So this is exactly the difference. And as I said, it's a positive difference for the dotted versus the dashed control volume, meaning the operating line above with reference to below. And if you want to describe that and show that in a corresponding yx diagram, it looks like this. We have our two operating lines, they are running parallel, both have a slope l dot over g dot, and they are shifted by f dot over g dot. So above, for the uh, dotted control volume, it is shifted by the f dot over g dot. Of course, you can also sh regard the shift in horizontal direction, and regarding in uh, shifting in horizontal direction, it's by f dot over l dot. And why is that so? Well, you can prove it and show it directly, because this over this is exactly the slope, apparently. And now f dot over g dot divided by f dot over l dot is just l dot over g dot, which is exactly the slope. So this is the correct shift in horizontal direction. So it's that easy to describe a feed of just the transfer com component to this countercurrent process for separation. We can sum that up in a simple Draco message. The addition of a transfer component to the carrier streams leads to a parallel shift of the operating line, just by f dot over g dot or f dot over l dot, depending if you regard it vertically or horizontally. Now that's this topic, so to speak. Now let's directly, because this was so short, let's directly continue with the next thing we want to regard, 
and that's actually regarding a general feed. That's still also missing. We didn't consider that so far. And actually that should remind us of something. So now, before we have always added something to a dedicated phase, either the G dot or the L dot phase, uh, with arbitrary compositions or with exact compositions that we have in the, in the process. But now we want to assume that we have an arbitrary feed, so to speak, which means it may be a two-phase feed. We don't know exactly to which phase, or we, of course we need to know, but it's for the design it has to be defined, but it's a variable phase ratio. And we can depict it in this way. And actually we know this. This should remind us of something that we have already regarded in the section on distillation. Yeah, you remember we had our uh, rectifying part, we had our stripping part. There we had our L dot and G dot, L dot prime, G dot prime, as before. In our current nomenclature, this is the XI, this is the YI, this is the Y O, the X, XO, and we have the feed with the corresponding feed composition. And now we regard, so to speak, that feed position exactly where we feed it. And just to show it, only because of that, this has been stretched a little bit in vertical direction. So actually, this control volume is just a horizontal plane intersecting uh, our uh, process exactly at the point where the feed is being added. And only to depict what's going on in a little bit more detail, I have uh, pulled that apart a little bit so that we see that the certain fraction of the feed is actually being added to the L dot stream and a certain fraction is added to the G dot stream. And this Q may remind you of something. We have the Q already mentioned and derived in distillation. And of course this, is, this case is most appropriate for distillation, but it can also be generalized. And now the Q here in this diagram is exactly defined in the same way as it was defined previously. Possibly you didn't realize, or I can, exp I can exp show you that it's indeed such. Because remember, what was the case if the Q in distillation was boiling liquid? Just exactly boiling liquid, which means the feed goes only to the L dot, but not to the G dot. In that case, Q was equal 1, which means L dot in this case, uh, the, the F dot is Q times F dot. Only this one is exactly F dot is being added to the L dot, and 1 minus Q is 0 in that case, times F dot is added to the G dot which means nothing is added to the, to the G dot, everything is added to the L dot. So this Q as being the fraction of the F dot which is being added to the L dot is consistent with the derivation that we have made for the general feed in distillation columns. The other way around, Q equals zero corresponded to the case where the feed was vapor at its dew point, which means that the feed in that case is only added to the G dot. Now, if Q equals zero, then this is zero as well, so nothing is added to the liquid, that's correct. And on the other hand, hand side, one minus zero, so one times F dot, the full F dot, is being added to the G dot, as you would expect. And in between, the Q interpolates, so to speak, between these two extreme cases. And from distillation, we actually know, or rectification, we know that the Q can, in principle, also be negative or be higher, uh, larger than one, depending, so to speak, on the co corresponding situation, if that makes sense or not. If you have two carrier flow rates that are more or less emissible, then possibly uh, an Q less, zero, less than zero or above one doesn't make sense, but in distillation we have learned that it makes sense. And actually for this case we know how it works. Remember, we derived it. We derived it and I don't really derive it here because that's exactly the same equations, only slightly differently um, derived. Also, so the method of derivation is possibly a little bit different because we have a different viewpoint here, but the result will of course be identical. And the result is shown here. This is again directly taken from the uh, um, presentation on the rectification and we saw that this intersection line was relevant, this Q line, where we construct on the one hand side at XF on the diagonal as uh, being one point of the Q line and the second point being the XF over Q. We connect these, uh, so to speak, and extend the the, that straight line and that leads to the intersection of the both operating lines above and below that feed position. 
Of course, this is in the context of distillation. You see the equilibrium curve, the stage construction, you see the reflux ratio. Of course, in the general process that we are actually regarding in this section, all this doesn't need to be specified. And if you generalize that, it just looks like that. It's the same mathematics, but of course the context is different. So we have some operating line above with the slope L dot over G dot. We have an operating line below, L dot prime over G dot prime. They are intersecting somewhere. They have a point of intersection and all possible points of intersection can only lie on this Q line, exactly defined as before. And that Q line can again be found on the diagonal at XF as being one point. And so XF equals YF if you want to formally uh, express that. And on the other hand side, the intersection with the X axis being XF divided by Q. Connect these two lines, extend that so that these two, this point and that point define that straight line. And the point of intersection has to lie on that line. Because the math is the same and the Q is consistently defined here as compared to how we define it in the rectification section. So we know directly how this looks like. It's known to us. We don't need to rederive anything. The equations are the same. The Q line is the same. We can directly use it. But you see there up here there's not necessarily an intersection with the diagonal up here, also not necessarily down there. It depends on the separation process you are regarding. Of course, you are, if you are in distillation, possibly somewhere this, these uh, operating lines towards the top will eventually wind up on the diagonal, possibly also at the bottom, but not necessarily, as we will see later in this section. Okay, having accounted for that, it's also so quick. What is the take-home message? A two-phase feed with arbitrary composition can be depicted with a Q line, as in the Mercaptile diagram for rectification. Same mathematical Q line, the formula is identical because the balances in the end have to be identical. So that is the take-home message from this for the general feed. So this has been a relatively short section. So with that I would like to conclude at this point and continue with other options uh, in the next videos. Thank you very much.